Oh, oh man. Oh God. Ugh, I'm pretty much out of this stuff. I need something. I need something more. Oh, more volume. Hello, my name is William from 222 Productions, and I'm here to talk to you about USA versus the World Season 11 Edition. It's part of American Ninja Warrior. In uh, approximately 20 minutes or less. Uh. And, uh, guess I'm going to start now. So, um, look, all right, there's, there's a lot, <laughs> uh, there, there's a lot of stuff that I could say about USA versus the world. Uh, what do you want me to say? All right. I never, I never liked this stuff. I never liked the special. I, they have always been bad. It's just different degrees of how bad. Like, last year was the best USA versus the world they've ever done. It was the least offensive one. And even then, I wouldn't call that that good. It was just not as bad. This one is probably the second best they've ever done. Still not great. But if there's one thing that is cons- consistent about USA versus the world is its inconsistencies. It is. It will always change. It will never be consistent. That's the one thing that's consistent. It's not consistent. They they change the rules again. They change the number of people per team, and it's it's like ah, uh, because it's it's like six people per team. Three three so yeah six yeah three teams. Europe, Australia, and America, but they changed the rules again. The scoring system. So it's three heats in in stage one. Each one uh, first place uh, first place is worth two points. Uh, second place is worth one point, and third place was worth nothing. Now here's where the scoring system gets really dumb, because they actually because we're stage two. They change the scoring system so that first place gets three points, second place gets two points, and third place gets one point. And they actually had the audacity. These people had the audacity to claim that uh, that they were upping the score as a result. That the, that somehow the stage two runs, the the two stage two runs, were meant more than the stage one runs. No, they don't. Quick math: two minus one is one. One minus zero is one. That's the, that's the point differences for stage one. Here are the point differences for stage two. Three minus two is one. Two minus one is one. It makes no difference. If you increase all the points by the same amount, it doesn't make a difference. It's like you didn't change the point values at all. The audacity of them making Matt Eisman claim that the stage two was was worth more than stage one. It was all an illusion. It was all a ruse. God, these people. Oh. At least with stage three, it actually, uh, it actually made a difference because first place for stage three, there was only one heat, was five points. Second place was three points, and third place was one point. That actually made a difference, because it's it's two points of difference in between each place. Uh, so, yeah, that actually mattered. <laughs> oh, my God. And basically, outside of that stuff, for the most part, it was fairly inoffensive. It was boring. That's the thing with USA versus the world. It's always boring, because there's no time limit. These people can take a long ass time when completing the stage, and honestly, this whole you know country pride bowl crap, it it doesn't appeal to me for ninja. It, it's not fun watching them run the stages again when it doesn't really matter. It's just a giant exhibition, you know. There's some cool moments, but for the most part, it's it's bland. 
<laughs> One thing that was um, nice to see was that they showed us the process of uh, when the competitors got chosen, uh, specifically the American pl- uh, uh, competitors, which ones they chose to uh, run USA versus the world. Because for those of you who don't know, because they had to push back the taping of Stage 3 uh, an extra day, they filmed Stage 3, Stage 4 of the regular season, and then they filmed USA versus the world all on the same night, which is why they end up doing the final stage stowed out in the middle of the morning. Uh, I don't know exactly what time it was, but I'm guessing that must have been like 7 o'clock in the morning. It was a long night for everyone uh, because the uh, daybreak <laughs> ended up coming up. <sighs> but um, So I'll just go through some, some, some results. So Olivia Vivian, good, good friend of the show, uh, she went first for Australia, hilariously, in hindsight, because I'm so gosh darn late with this, uh, review, uh, you hear Matt Eisman reference, uh, that Olivia is a, is an Olympic gymnast, and that you can watch the Olympics this year on NBC. No, you can't, <laughs> because the world's gone to hell. And instead, um... Yeah, we just got to watch her. She 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 did, completed the whole course. It was great to see. Originally, I was going to uh, um, I was going to criticize her for like showboating before pressing the button, but I realized that she probably realized that if either of her two opponents cleared stage one, they were probably going to do it faster than her anyway. So it really didn't matter. So I was not going to criticize her for that. Mm. Oh, that's good. Um, there was Thomas Huber from, uh, France. He, unfortunately, he slipped off of, uh, the jumping spider, but Michael Torres was able to clear, um, more than a minute faster than Olivia did. So that gave USA two points and Australia one. Um, and this is, this is going to be an ongoing trend of, uh, Europe not doing well, unfortunately. Um, because uh, St- Steffi Noppinger uh, ended up going out on uh, Spin Your Wheels. Uh, she, uh, he's from... Um, uh, she's from... She's from uh, the Aust- Austria. Adam Rail ended up uh, clearing the uh, entire course, despite some, uh, some uh, 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 funkiness on the Jumping Spider. And from Australia, uh, Josh... Uh, um, O'Sullivan um, end up failing uh, in between that, uh, those two obstacles. Um, and so uh, Australia got one more point and USA versus got two more points. Uh, what? What is... This is really embarrassing. Diving boards. Thank you. <laughs> I have it written in my notes as DB and I completely blanked on what DB meant. I'm sorry. Um... I really don't care about this special. I'm going to be honest. It, 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 like, that's my review. It's not very good. It's never very good. But I do it because I review all A&W stuff. As long as it's not A&W Jr. Because it's not for me. And I couldn't be bothered, quite frankly. Um, heat 3. Um, Kenshu Ahmed from Romania was able to get uh, uh, Europe on the board. Uh, because uh, uh, he failed the double dipper, missing the transfer, and from Aus- and Cam Del Selvia from Australia failed spin your wheels, and then one of the probably the biggest moment of uh, the entire show for for America was that uh, Jess Lebrecht finally completed stage one. They made a big deal on how she's failed the last obstacle of stage one multiple times. I'm glad to see her actually complete the course. Now here's the thing. Here's, here's one of the important things to, to point out. I've said this before last year, and I'll say it again. Clearing stage one on uh, USA versus the world is not the same thing as clearing stage one during the regular season because there is no time limit, and she can technically go slower than the normal time limit. We don't know how long it took her to finish because they took the clock off the screen, which is probably an indicator that she took longer to complete it. What I'm glad about this, uh, however, what I'm glad about this moment is that it taught Jesse that uh, she can complete stage one. She just needs to be a little bit faster. 
And hopefully, when the world gets back to normal and she makes it to stage one once again in 2021, she can complete stage one within the time limit and be only the third woman to take on stage two uh, in the normal season. That is my hope. So we end stage one with Europe uh, with one point, Australia with two, and USA with a perfect six. Uh, then they did Daniel Gill, who cleared stage two. Anton Fomenko. Hey, I remember uh, seeing stuff from him on, on the internet in Russia. Uh, he, unfortunately, uh, he failed the salmon ladder or the, uh, the extended ladder. That was, that was this point I see it because I know he's better than that. And then um, Daniel Mason from uh, Australia failed the snapback. So more points for Australia and USA and Europe uh, slag, uh, lagging behind even more. And then uh, Carson Williams uh, was uh, uh, um, Bryson Klein from Austria clear Australia. Sorry, not Austria. Australia uh, cleared the whole uh, course in 202. I believe he did that last year. Also, pretty impressive. Uh, uh, Demir Okanovic from Bosnia ended up uh, failing the uh, swing surfer. And Carson Williams. Uh, shockingly, failed Grim Sweeper, the dismount section. Uh, that was surprising to see. Um, I didn't. I feel like I feel like if I had actually watched the special before NNL, I probably could have asked him about it, but uh, I didn't. <laughs> Quick funny story. During NNL, um, I was I was um, I was moderating his meet and greet, and at one point, someone uh, asked him a question about USA versus the world, and in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, he was in that. Uh, maybe I should have watched it in time. But to be honest, I don't care. <laughs> uh, so, at the end of Stage 2, uh, USA had uh, 11 points, Australia had 7, and Europe only had 3. And and this, this is the thing about the Heat format, or just the format in general uh, in USA versus the world, is that we came really close to Europe being completely blocked out uh, from the final stage in Stage 3. Because uh, there's only one run in Stage 3, and the only way at this scenario that Europe could have moved on to the final stage is if Europe took first place, uh, America took second place, and Australia took third place. It would force a tie between Europe and Australia, each at eight points, and they would have to do some sort of tiebreaker. It's the only way Europe moves on. <laughs> Did that happen? No. Spoiler, no. So, uh, apologies. Uh, I will get this wrong. From Norway is uh, Magnus uh, mid Midbo. Midbo. It's, I know it's, it's this... I apologize. I, I cannot pronounce Norwegian names, even though... My grandfather uh, was Norwegian, um, so apologies. Uh, but he ended up uh, failing um, the pipe dream, and so did Matt Shung uh, from Australia. But he did it slower. But the thing is, the thing is, the only thing is, is that uh, they didn't fail. They didn't really fail pipe dream. They failed the lache to that weird spinning platform that I'm not a big fan of. I'm not a big fan of it for two reasons. It's not really the pipe uh, obstacle of Pipe Dream. Apparently, that was actually called a different obstacle uh, the first night they were filming, but they decided to combine the two for some reason. I don't know. A and W is weird like that sometimes. Uh, but also, I'm just I'm not sold on the obstacle yet. Maybe, maybe, maybe in the future uh, I can be, but right now, not sold on it. So. That meant uh, that the last person to go was uh, Drew Dreschel. And um, the only way Europe could move on is if he also failed the pipe dream, but he did it in a time that was slower than Europe, but faster than Australia. He ended up clearing the whole thing. It, it was uh, pretty interesting is that you can see uh, the sun rising uh, during his run, so they couldn't really uh, mix up any sort of order if they wanted to. Uh, not that they would, because that's the only way to create any sort of tension. Um, what's interesting, one of the interesting things about me uh, airing this, uh, recording this review so late, is that uh, they recently aired USA vs. the World in Australia. And um, in that show, uh, they, the first off, they label it as Australia vs. the World, uh, appropriately enough. But... 
they actually cut uh, Drew's run uh, completely due to the, uh, uh, well, let's say, as they put it, legal situation um, that uh, Drew is currently in as of the uh, filming of this review. Um, they just did a, na- a narrator just explained that USA won the heat. Uh, so probably the best way, you know, I, I, you know, I understand not really want to promote the guy at the moment. It's the best they could have done. So USA and Australia are moving on to the final stage. It was Adam Rail from America and Bryson Klein from Australia. Um, this is the one time. This is the one thing I would have liked to have watched USA versus the World before NNL. I should have done that, but didn't. Because um, I would have liked to ask Adam Rail if he's been working on his rope climbing because he got beat by Bryson Klein, who completed in twenty six seconds, twenty six and a half seconds. And this is why I want them to change the final stage. It can't just be a rope climb because so many people are clearing the final stage in 30 seconds or less. Just get rid of it. Do what Sasuke's doing. Do something original. I don't care what you do. Just do it. I'm not asking for the world. I'm just asking you to change the final stage. And you guys have an extra year to figure it out now because of everything going on in the world. So just do it, guys. I'm tired of this. You know what else I'm tired of? I'm tired of USA versus the world. I'm tired of this international supremacy bull crap that they do every single year. The problem is, is that at worst, it's horrendous. And at best, these specials are just so gosh darn boring. They're boring. That's the best way to describe it. There's, they're, 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 they're uninteresting. There, there's nothing exciting about watching. They, they have a few bright spots, but I'd rather just watch more of the regular season, you know? I would have preferred... Like, honestly, Las Vegas was four episodes. I say, heck, make it six. I'd rather watch... Like, honestly, like, I mean, the All-Star special is fun. And all, but like, I'd rather just watch a longer Vegas than watch USA versus the world, quite frankly. And I guess that's sort of my summary of everything. Uh, don't bother watching USA versus the world. Uh, not that you can anyway, because it got removed from, um, uh, all the on demand services. But overall, uh, this, I mean, it could have been worse, this special, but it also could have been a lot better. So that's it. Uh, Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more Ninja Warrior and American Ninja Warrior related videos. And hey, check out some of these other videos of me talking about similar topics. Thank you all for watching.